Thanks, Karen. After a budget and spending review in which he raised taxes by the billions and squirted money around as if there was no tomorrow, Chancellor Rishi Sunak said, we need to make the moral case for a smaller state. Most Tories might have preferred him to say, we've got to tax fairly and spend wisely. But that was actually Rachel Reeves, his Labour shadow. In her reply to Sunak, she talked about the wealthy sipping cheaper champagne on cheaper flights, many of them bankers enjoying their firm's tax cut too. Also, the broadest shoulders should bear the biggest burden and so on. It was traditional fare, but the fair tax and wise spending line was inspired. Although she only had 45 minutes to prepare, Starmer was out of it, having tested positive for Covid, she saw an open goal and struck. The Tories were spending big and taxing big. The hint of a little fiscal caution from Labour might not go amiss behind the red wall and perhaps across the country. And perhaps she saw the contradiction in what Sunak had said at the end, as opposed to what he'd done in the action-packed hour-long speech. Labour's poll rating on managing the economy is slowly improving. The Tories is slowly slipping. Now, these days, people tend to judge a political party by what it promises to do with the economy, what it plans to do about wealth creation, distribution, and how much you and I get to keep, and how big and how far the reach of the state should be. Equally, the competence credentials of any political party tend to be measured by their ability to manage the economy. Given that, this budget and spending review begged a key question for me. What do the Conservatives really stand for these days? In 1979, Margaret Thatcher won the first of three general elections by pledging a smaller state, less borrowing and lower taxes. Now, in his first budget, her Chancellor Geoffrey Howe raised taxes to cut debt. But after that, the drive was tax cutting and state shrinking. The philosophy on tax was defined by her next Chancellor, Nigel Lawson, who said... The Tories' belief should be that income or property belongs to the people who earn it or who have legitimately acquired it, and that a case has to be made for taxing it away. Now, in his 2021 budget, Rishi Sunak asked, do we want to live in a country where the response to every question is, what's the government going to do about it? Where every time some new challenge emerges, the answer is always, the taxpayer must pay, or... Do we choose to recognise that government has limits? Now, not a million miles apart from Lawson, but the earlier parts of Sunak's budget and the spending review seem to give the thumbs up to the first part of Sunak's fiscal philosophy question. He went for a big state with big government and higher taxes. He also claimed, as I said earlier, we need to make the moral case for a smaller state and assured nervous backbenchers that evening that every marginal pound in the future needs to go toward lower taxes rather than increased spending. Struck me as a classic case of cake-and-eat-it fiscal policy. Optimism about a better tomorrow or just plain confusion? You take your pick. Now, the official forecasts suggest that it might just be all right on the night and that soon it might have a small budget surplus by 2024, by which time an election looms. But there are a lot of variables in there. Inflation, employment, interest rates, higher mortgages already inching up, the cost of living generally. So we'll see. My interests focus on what it tells us about the Conservative Party of 2021, led by Boris Johnson, with Chancellor Rishi Sunak, seemed by many to be the heir apparent. Sunak's first lieutenant, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Simon Clark, admitted it was a philosophical shift the state had an important role to play in delivering its policy priorities, he said. Many commentators said the shift was so great, it was a budget that Gordon Brown could have delivered. The ever-balanced and impartial Paul Johnson, director of the Institute of Fiscal Studies, said, this really is a big-spending, high-taxing government. Claims it was a post-Covid budget, as Sunak had suggested, were blown away by the IFS, who observed 80% of the announced spending had nothing to do with the pandemic. Under the headline, Thatcherite flame is doused by splashing the cash without cuts, the former boss of the Office of Budget Responsibility, Sir Robert Choate, wrote in The Times, 
the man hailed by some as the lone keeper of the Thatcherite flame in a cabinet of deficit-friendly populists, has chosen to repair the fiscal damage from the pandemic entirely through tax rises rather than spending cuts. Now, John Redwood, who you just heard talking to Nigel Farage, didn't like what the Chief Secretary said, but clung to the Chancellor's peroration about tax and his reassurance to Tory backbenchers on tax cuts before spending. The economy needs to get back to the kind of policies to bring us faster growth. We get that if we don't hit people's income quite so much. Well, Michael Portillo was less circumspect. He simply said, it's not Conservative. Now, the Conservatives have always had profound disagreements in recent years, often about Europe. But the 1979 election resolved one of the most profound, the management of the economy. Ted Heath's corporist approach, chatting around the neddy table with managers and trade unionists, were gone. Big spending Keynesianism was out and the monetarists came to the fore to curb inflation. Subsidies to ailing industries were withdrawn as British Steel and British Leyland learnt to their pain. State-owned enterprises with varying degrees of success were privatised. The 80s took few prisoners and were pretty brutal. But spending seemed to come under some control and taxes, especially for the highest earning wealth creators, fell. It became the norm in Tory circles and was still echoed in the days of Cameron and Osborne. This, I think, is something profoundly different. The fact that it took 48 hours to go from cheers as a headline to triple whammy tells you something is afoot and it's more profound than Brown's 10p tax rate or Osborne's pasty tax. So what do the Conservatives of Johnson and Sunak really stand for? And that is my question tonight.